Is it recording right now? It is. Oh, okay. Um, do I say three, two, one, go, or three, go, two, you one? Go three. You got three, two, two one. one. And, and then, then we roll the intro music. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, today we have, obviously, if you guys have watched D and D, we have our friend Nick, aka Pippin, aka uh, what's? Oh yeah, what's your yeah. little friend there? Uh, my OnlyFans account is. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what am I thinking? What's your little guy that's with you on D and D? Tenaculum. I was yeah. gonna call you Hermunculus, but that's what he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Hermione. Homunculus. 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 Hermunculus. Yeah. Her- Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as promised, we brought a guest on the show. Uh, First guest. Yeah, he got really drunk last night and had to stay over, so we were like, you might as well just do the podcast with us. That's yeah, true. and I was like, what is a podcast? Yeah, he's still hungover. He doesn't know what he's doing right now. No, yeah. he did stay over last night, but he did not get too drunk. No. We did stay up until 2 o'clock in the morning, but yeah, we were literally just having real talk. Lots and lots of real talk. And then we were like, well... We have nothing to talk about for tomorrow because we've all talked about <laughs> yeah. everything. I was like, we're going to get up in the morning and be like, I don't want to talk at all. Like, we're just not going to want to do anything on the podcast. But but yeah, so he's here. Uh, so uh, we're going to jump into the Q&As right away. Uh, the first person that sent us the questions, once again, was Trixie. Um, everybody else wasn't awake because I, I messaged everybody on the Patreon group on Discord. But you I know it's like super start, early in the morning. You should start messaging them on, on a Saturday. Well, the thing is, is what I would like to do is if you guys are, if you guys do have the uh, Patreon, Patreon uh, tier unlocked, just feel free to message me once a week uh, with your questions uh, or just put them in the Discord because it's kind of hard for me to kind of go after everybody all the time. Mm-hmm. So that would be the, th- the way to go. But uh, Trixie did ask questions, so we'll go one at a time. What's the most useless product around today? And we'll start with Nick. Oh, God. I don't even have time to think. No. No. All right. The most, the most uh, useless product around? Like that I use? Or that just well, I think it's just anything. General. Okay, I have an idea. I mean, it's kind of useless. Okay. So recently, there's been like a whole marketing campaign. He's like the for, government. Yeah. Well, that, that was my first one. But I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop myself. Yeah. Yeah, the police. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so recently, within like, I don't know, the last five years, there's been a whole marketing campaign to market basically like skincare for men. Yeah. Like, they take, like, a Nivea container of, like, moisturizer, buy? and they make it black with, like, chrome letters. Or because, like, like for men. yeah, <laughs> I guess, like, hygiene has been considered feminine, yeah. but they're trying to market it to men now, so they make it, like, smell like Old Spice, but it's the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's the most useless thing. It's the same thing as, Just like, shampoo. Be. For men. For men. <laughs> Conditioner, like, but with chrome. Yeah. Like, it's like alpha, like alpha yogurt, alpha male yogurt. Do men have different hair than women have? It's the same thing with like, I don't buy women's razors. I buy yeah, men's you razors. Yeah. Because it's like, the women's razors are like, it's pink. And it's mm-hmm. small and it's dull and it just gives you a shaving rash. Like That's actually, why? there's something called the pink tax, yeah. which is the same product sold to women. But it's pink and it costs more. Yeah, it's so That's stupid. Like it's like, what? It, what is it about this razor that needs to be different because I'm a woman? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It has like a little strip of soap or something on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this does nothing for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I would say that the most useless product out today that's becoming like, I think, more and more obvious how useless it is, is how grocery stores will like put everything in plastic. Like, why is it that when I go to buy a package of mushrooms, they have to be wrapped in plastic? Yeah. What is the use of that? As soon as I get home, I'm going to open that up and just put them in, like, yeah. and cook them or something. You know, like, why can't it not just be, like, here's a biodegradable bag, put all your produce in it? I think it's because it won't be airtight, I'm assuming. Costco's I, the worst It's for so that. bad. Like, I once, yeah. I once went to buy... Um, I think it's like that with a lot of things, though. Like, sometimes you'll get things that are plastic within plastic within plastic. Yeah, like, Perfect it'll example be, like, a bunch the... of cucumbers, and then they're also in a bag. I'm like, well, think, why? Well, think about candy, right? You have you have a bag of candy, and inside a bag of candy, there's a plastic bag wrapped around that piece of candy, right? It's all for mm-hmm. airtight, but still, it's like, yeah. I understand when it's, like, mass-produced, like, not understand, but, you know, when they mass-produce things in a factory, and then they, like, count so many, and they put it into another bag. But when it comes to, like fruits it's like why do i need you know when they'll have um, a bunch of apples and then they'll put them on one of those like black trays and then wrap like plastic around mm-hmm. it like why mm-hmm. 
What do you? What is? Why? Yeah, yeah too much packaging. Yeah, too much packaging. Like it's completely unnecessary. I saw this thing actually this morning, which was the. Uh, it's a plastic bag made from a fruit, and they basically like condense the fruit down, and it makes plastic that you can just eat. And so people were wrapping them in uh, like a sandwich and like eating it while the sandwich was on the plastic bag and just eat it. It doesn't taste like anything. In Asian countries, they use banana leaves. Yeah. yeah. So they'll take banana leaves and they'll wrap their produce and whatever in it. And it's yeah. completely like, you know, compostable. Yeah. That's like, why smart. don't we do those things? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. So. I know like places like Costco are really bad for that. Yeah. I know a guy who works on a mushroom farm actually, and he sells his mushrooms to like grocery stores and stuff. And he says Costco's the worst mm-hmm. because a lot of grocery stores will just send them like a giant crate of mushrooms mm-hmm. and they'll just put them out. But Costco, it has to be like wrapped in plastic each individual and then in like a container where there's like foam little depressions for each mushroom to fit into and then that's wrapped in plastic yeah like it's just like really excessive i've seen recently i'm i'm i am very bad at remembering to bring my reusable bags to the grocery store and i I need to to get better at that but yeah grocery stores are starting to get rid of like the bags when you check out but i've also seen and i want to buy them i just want to buy them on amazon because i've seen them for cheaper than they sell them at the store but it's produce bags that are like reusable Mm -hmm. so instead of those little like clear plastic ones that you buy to put your apples in when you're picking out your apples Mm -hmm. it's like reusable ones with like a drawstring so that you don't have to like yeah because what do you do as soon as you get home with those apples you take them out of the bag you throw the bag in the garbage yeah Yeah. well i know like Like, back in the day they used to have brown paper bags yeah why don't they have those so i used to work at the grocery store and they used to have them and people would complain about them that they weren't strong enough but they're strong like they're really like but the thing is that grocery stores would pay probably like let's just say a hundred dollars for 50 of them like look hypothetically yeah and you would also pay or pay a hundred for a thousand plastic bags yeah plastic's so cheap right so that's the difference between plastic and paper right so and and the worst is that you can reuse you can technically reuse plastic because it's safe like something spills inside the plastic bag you can wash and reuse Mm -hmm. it paper is if if it gets damaged or wet or whatever you're screwed right so but still, and shipping. in this world is we can't afford to no 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 i think we're, we're just anymore. talking about back in the day yeah. this is why i uh for halloween was a sea turtle yeah and robert was plastic choking <laughs> me. <laughs> no joke yeah it's crazy um useless things i didn't really think about it. i was too too in too immersed in your uh your stuff there um i'm trying to think if there's anything that i use that's like useless that i'm like oh i personally don't even need this i just like having it like i don't know well, then it's useful if you like it. I guess. I can't I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. When we go to the next question, um, I will go first on that one. You had I, all of us. I know. I, I was, did mine on the spot. Yeah, I know. me too. Yeah. What's useless? Hmm, I don't know. I, I don't like, I can't think of anything Just that... panicking. I was, <laughs> in my mind, I was thinking uh, how you have like 50 different types of gas, like unleaded and all that stuff. Yeah, and we really only use the one. But I know that most of it is because like certain cars are like, you have to have that. And we actually had a discussion with one of our friends that like has a, has a BMW. And he strictly will only put like the highest like uh, level uh, like that you can get for gas, right? And... I'm like, it, does that actually do anything, or does that like? It's all. In, it all comes out of the same container. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> There's just a bunch of straws all from like the same thing. It's like, like, it's like when you see those things where it's the recycling, and then you open it, and it all goes in the same bag. Yeah, it's yeah. like plastic, plastic, paper, glass. Yeah, it's like, like garbage, plastic, glass, yeah, yeah. and then you open it, and it's all just the same bin. But I'm sure, like all the car enthusiasts out there, are like, no, it makes a huge difference because like it's cleaner for your, uh, for your car and stuff your like engine, that. But yeah. like, I don't know. I for one like. You know, I think I think ideally, like we go for like whatever the cheapest is. I've right? never yeah. had a nice enough car. To, like, I know, like I've never, like I know when I first enough. got my last car, he was like, "Oh, you might want to not put like unleaded in there right away. Just go like mid grade and then eventually go down." But I'm like, "What? Why?" Like, yeah, I agree. So yeah, I think a lot of stuffs like that too. Like, do we need thirty toothpaste options? No. No. Why isn't there just one toothpaste? Yeah. Yeah. And how different are they actually? Like the ones that say like. We'll never know. Like. uh gingivitis fighting and then the one that's whitening like what is so different about the ingredients i've never actually compared them to be honest the next question is the next question is what animal would be the most terrifying if it could speak and i'm gonna i'll go first with this one Ooh, okay. um, I, think. I think the most terrifying animal uh if it could speak would probably be a bat i would assume because uh, i think 
I think if bats could talk, one, you would hear them from, like, miles away because of, like, sonar and stuff like that. <laughs> and, like, you'd probably be, like, it'd probably be, like, shut up. Like, I can't sleep with all that freaking sonar going off. And, like, hitting, like, it would, like, reverberate off your windows and stuff, right? <laughs> be, like, shut up. Do you think they would scream? Oh, probably. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? I'm thinking that uh, or squirrels, but I think squirrels would be kind of cute. Squirrels are adorable. Yeah. I think that would be cute. Yeah. <laughs> or rats, maybe. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, what's the creepiest animal? I have one if you want me to go yeah, first. Yeah, you can go. Okay, so my first thought was, like, birds or something, but then I was like... And birds do speak. Birds, they do, do, speak, birds yeah. do speak, and also, like, I was trying to think about, like, what animals will talk about. Yeah. Because I feel like birds, if they're... They would just be, like, trying to, like, have sex all the time. Like, that's what they do when they're singing every morning. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. They're like, have sex with me, have yeah. sex with me. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, so I was like, what would be creepy? So I picked a dolphin. Yeah. Because oh, they're yeah. super smart, and I would be worried what they would say to us. I always feel like they're up to something, you know? Yeah, they're, like, mysterious. Yeah. Like, have you seen Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? No. In Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the world is getting destroyed, and they talk about how dolphins are the second smartest animal in the world, mm-hmm. but actually they're the smartest animal in the world because they leave Earth before the Earth is oh destroyed. Oh, yeah. And they're like, thanks for the fish, <laughs> and then they leave. <laughs> have you ever heard about the LSD experiments on dolphins? That yes, they did back I in have. It's, it, it is fucked up yeah it is real weird i'm there not was... going to talk about it because they did some weird stuff with dolphins but yeah, they like... were trying to teach a dolphin how to speak yeah that but they the like heck? they gave the dolphin lsd a whole bunch and then they made this girl live in a tank with the dolphin for like two months or something like yeah, that yeah and then, it hit and then puberty. LA, lots of weird <laughs> stuff happened anyway oh that's so sad it is but dolphins are very intelligent yeah i don't know i don't know i don't want to know what they have to say no It'd yeah it'd be scary yeah what if yeah, they have no. some sort of like truth yeah. yeah they know what's like really underwater yeah i would say like maybe a monkey because they're very human like mm-hmm. so yeah. it would be kind of creepy to be like they would sound i feel like they would sound sophisticated put a little bit of glasses on them and they would they would, they would, they would seem pretty good yeah like from um, umbrella academy. that's what i'm thinking of yeah. yeah umbrella academy monkey yeah the butler yeah you can't help but think that you know they're what? pretty intelligent oh Dogs, though. I think if dogs could speak, it'd be pretty cool. Rachel stepped on Saber's tail earlier, and we were making a joke that... <laughs> that was going to be my story. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, no, Rachel did nothing earlier. Yeah. Um, For news, I... We, Is that all the questions that there were? Yeah, there was, there was just two. All there was right. just two. Uh, they, were they both from... They Trixie? were both from, from Trixie. <laughs> thank you, Trixie. Yeah, thank you, Trixie, for your questions. Um, I know Kawhi and Sof are currently probably not awake right now, so yeah. we'll have to wait till next time. So you can go first with your uh, news story. Oh, I did not prepare a news story. That's fine. Really? I have a, I have a news story that's... <laughs> okay, uh, well, I'll tell the news story that I was trying to give you when you were looking for news stories. Yeah. Okay, I like that one. So I found this on Not the Onion, the subreddit, and it is actually on WebMD. That's the article the article's from. But basically there was this man who... Um, people thought he'd like claimed that he had never drunk alcohol in his life. And people were like, you are a drunk. Like, you're constantly showing symptoms of being intoxicated. And, like, people were really concerned. And it turned out that he actually has, like, a rare condition that turns carbohydrates that he eats into alcohol. Like, his large intestine makes alcohol. <laughs> so he was getting drunk from just eating food. So he was Sucks. like a... What is a distillery, basically? Yeah, he's like he's <laughs> got, like, distillery. an implanted distillery. So, like, he's showing up to work, and he had, like, some pretzels, and he was like, whoa. <laughs> and they were like, oh, my God, he's an alcoholic. Yeah. But his body Poor makes guy. alcohol. I mean, it's, but like, it's like that, equal like, parts you, cool would, and terrifying. But wouldn't they realize that when you were, like, when he was younger, though? Maybe I don't it, know. Maybe it only just started. You know? Yeah, I don't know, the, like, the details of his condition. I'm like, that's hilarious. But how long would that have to sit there and ferment, though? Because the whole idea is that you take it and it sits there for a very long time, right? Alcohol? His well, body, if you're like, making it outside, it... yeah. Maybe it's different inside your body. He probably... I don't know the exact details of this condition. The science yeah. I mean, I can say it really confidently, and it might sound like I know what I'm talking yeah. about, but I don't know what I'm yeah. talking about. <laughs> yeah. Literally just read this. Yeah, I just read this now. Five minutes ago. Yeah. I was, looking but... for, I was looking for funny news articles. I wanted to talk about... I mean, we like, kind of watched the Super Bowl last week. No, right. like really, because we don't know anything about sports. But there is a guy in Australia <laughs> who is. Hold on, let me read the uh, thing. And Did I, you sign this because of me? I thought I put this in the group chat. Oh, I don't know. No, we were talking about it at work. Okay, okay. Okay, there's a far right um, uh, Christian conservative commentator. He has his own radio show or something. Who has announced that he wants to sue the NFL over J Lo and Shakira's halftime performance, which he said was 
too pornographic and discriminatory to his Christian beliefs. Yeah, he said he made a comment about how he said it brought him closer to hellfire. Yeah. And what then, the heck? And then he says that it should have come with a warning because it was too provocative and said it could keep him from getting into the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> and he's suing the Super Bowl for like trillions of dollars. Like he's trying to sue them for like eight hundred and sixty seven trillion dollars. So la- <laughs> apparently apparently last year I saw it's funny enough, like uh, funny enough, like last year, I guess uh, Maroon Five, uh, like the lead singer, had the shirt off and stuff, and uh, like it showed like a picture of like it was like a meme of like a, a bunch of like like women out there who were like, oh my god, like Maroon Five, like we love you, you know what I mean? They're all their shirts are off and everything, and then it goes to this, and everyone's just like has their arms crossed, and they're all just like, how dare you? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like completely like fifty fifty. And know? also, yeah. did they never had their shirts off? They're no. wearing clothing. <laughs> Yeah, he was talking about how the camera was, like, right up in Kesha's crotch. And Who? The guy, this guy. Kesha. Oh, no, sorry, not Kesha. J-Lo, Shakira. Sh- Shakira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I can't get my female pop stars. Yeah. How <laughs> dare. It's embarrassing. Yeah. But, oh, my God, that's so funny. I know. Yeah. Like, the fact that he's, like, he couldn't just turn it off. He's, like, you owe me $867 trillion. <laughs> because this has... Yeah, change the channel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't watch it if no, you're that No, he was captivated. Concerned. Yeah, he was like, the devil made me do it. Yeah. <laughs> the devil made me do it. Um, <laughs> my stories, are, I have two of them, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so, once again, yeah, I was looking for, like, funny news article stuff, but then... Nick kind of referred me to uh, not the onion, which is apparently if you guys don't know what the onion is, first of all, the onion is like a non like fake don't news. don't go there. It's like all fake news. It's like when you go on don't you, go there when you go to the checkout at uh, your grocery store and you see like the the global or whatever. Or is it the global or the it's like these weird things? I'm National Enquirer. Re- something like the, the that. And, and it's really funny. Like when you when I used to work at a we were talking about how I used to work at a grocery store. When I used to work there, they would bring in the magazines and like some of these articles were so ridiculous. It was like. Uh, aliens finally touch down and like uh, taste M and M's for the first yeah, but time. Yeah, the difference is that the, those were like trying to. They're trying they to be were, funny. Like, thought they were real, but no, also they thought they were real. But the Onion is like just sarcasm. Yeah, yeah the just, Onion is like a joke. Like they post outrageous news titles yeah. to mock like what you're talking. Yeah, yeah, about. yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. So anyway, so not the Onion is like like true facts. So the one the one at the very top was uh, company releases polit- uh, politics scented candles made from genuine genuine horse poop. And like it was like really funny. I was just like reading all like the comments and stuff like that, and I thought that was pretty. That was politically funny. scented candles. Yeah, it smells like horse shit. That smells like. Well, it doesn't smell like. It just says. It just says made from from actual from horse, horse poop. What? So which party? People... Which party smells like horse shit? It, it yeah. just says on the candle. It says made from real Kentucky horse, and then it says like blank out. Uh, for subtle notes of bureaucracy, uh, like hypocrisy, uh, and then Hypocrisy? yeah, and it says all that other stuff, and it says and old farts on there, or whatever. Oh, um, oh my god! And the second, Ew. which I thought was actually kind of cool, is uh, Mumbai tests traffic lights that stay red if you honk your horn. So yeah, I actually <laughs> watched the video yeah. about that because Mumbai is like the honk honking capital of the world. Yeah, which is really? part of their driving. Yeah, like they honk when they turn, they honk when they stop, when they're all waiting at a red light, they're all honking. Why? Like, the whole city is, like, a cacophony of honks. Why? It's just how they drive. Like, it's, like, their driving culture there. That's so weird. But they've been trying to combat it because tourists come to Mumbai and they're like, ah. <laughs> I can only imagine, like... sleep. Like, yeah. yeah. But then you got to think about, like, same, like, I, I would I would love to go to New York City, like, Times Square and, like, or just, like, see how it is there and stuff, but I can only imagine it just being complete chaos. I've been there. I know, yeah. Yeah, it is kind when of. I was yeah. in my <laughs> <laughs> Next thing is that anytime we're talking about something and he wants to get in on the conversation, he'll be he'll it'll start with when I was in Manhattan and they were all just like, we're like oh. uh-huh. yeah. I had a really transformative part of my <laughs> life where I went to Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. And I was stayed and it was like really eye opening. So yeah. I often reference that time yeah. in my life. We're like, and they mocked me. We're like, me for oh it. yeah, yeah, I went to the supermarket and Nick's like, when I was in Manhattan, and we're, he's yeah. like, supermarkets were like weird. Yeah, I visited this little old woman who like gave me an apple, yeah. and then and then she flew off into the night. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny whenever I ask people like on stream about uh, New York, I'm like, oh, like I've always wanted to go to New York. Like it's one of my things. Like I always because of Home Alone, right? It, like it made me want to go there and be like, ooh, it's Christmas time. Of like all the, movie the big tree that can make you want to go to New York. Yeah, that's the Home only Alone. movie that features New York. I yeah, think. yeah, I think that that's like. The one. That's what that's what brings out their tourism. Yeah. Anyways, and so I'm like, 
So I'm like, well, I was like, what are you about you guys? Have you guys ever been there? Like some, it's usually 50, 50. Most people will be like, no, don't go there. It's shitty. And other people are like, oh, I actually kind of liked it. But then I find that it's people that live there that are like, oh God, no, like it's crazy. And the people that are like, just went there for vacation are like, yeah, it was really fun. So it's like, I, I feel like if you live there, it might be pure chaos. I think it's like a specific kind of like vacation. And for me, it would just be pure stress. I'd be like, in Toronto, I, I don't know how there. people live in Toronto. Like that, like mm. actually Montreal was even worse. Toronto, though. and you think that New York would be good? Oh, I know. New I'm York just saying, is- I wouldn't want to live there. I wouldn't want to visit there and just be like, you know, go play that big piano and stuff like that. It was really cool. It depends what you do. Yeah. Like if you want to do all the touristy stuff in New York, I would not you can do, do that. those things though. Like it depends on your trip. Like when I went to New York, I went to like museums and mm-hmm. art exhibits. Do they sell bears and in, uh, what's that park? park. Central Park. Do they park? sell bears? Do they still have bears? I thought did you they, said, did they sell Central bears in Central Park? Park bears. I don't. Did they I don't ever, think they have, ever bears? have bears? It's a man-made park in the middle of a city. I don't know. I wonder if like what kind of wildlife is in there? Just like raccoons and stuff. I'd say like squirrels. Yeah, it's all. It's a huge rats. squirrel kingdom. <laughs> Lots of rats. A huge squirrel kingdom. Yeah, they and they have they fight with like different factions, like Game of Thrones. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's like uh, Watership Down, but with squirrels. Watership Down. Yeah. Oh, that was a book we read for a book club. Yeah. Also a classic. We should just start recording our book club sessions. Yeah, and Travis will sit here quietly. Yeah, and I'll just yeah. be like, uh, I read a comic the other day. Yeah. Comics are good. I don't I read, read, I don't read the, comics, actually. I read the comic <laughs> the other day. He doesn't read those, though. He's like, yeah. actually, I don't read comics. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah. So then, I don't know if anybody has any other news articles, but I have the Fact of the Day app now, which is actually really cool, kind of. I mean, I just installed it two minutes ago, but <laughs> I was like, we're always trying to find weird facts of the day, and every time I go there, there's like 50 pop-ups. I'm like, ugh, pop-ups drive me nuts. Uh, so I'll just keep clicking until Earth. Did you know new measurements? <laughs> did you know that new measurements suggest the Earth's inner core is far hotter than the prior experiments suggested, putting it 6,000 Celsius as hot as the sun's surface? Which is actually, um, I was watching a documentary a while back uh, when you were sleeping, and it was this company that was trying to get energy from the Earth's core, where they would they suggested drilling a hole. Uh, and bringing a metal rod that would go all the way down to the Earth's core. And it could be used, uh, it could be done for, it was like less than $110,000 or something like that. It was like really like cheap and inexpensive. And it could fuel like a small city. So basically it would be a- I just watched a movie about how this is a bad idea. (laughs) And it'd be like a small miniature uh, power plant. And they're like working on it. And it's actually like becoming like, like possible to do. So they like drill down to the mantle. So you drill down to the like the mantle and like then they they hook it up to obviously like a bunch of water that's like whatever and then they use it like that way basically. Like, so like does it heat the water and the water evaporates and powers the turbine? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so yeah. like it could and a bear, basically what they're saying is what they could do is they could just use anything, right? So they can use, they don't have to necessarily obviously be fresh water. They can just use whatever the hell they they have kind of thing, and then it would yeah. just be uh, and like Aquafina and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of water bottles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just call again. But uh, I just watched a disaster movie about how somebody did something similar and they destabilized the core of the earth and then they had to go back in and restabilize it because the earth was like off its magnetic like fields yeah and everyone is that why i felt dying. so weird last week <laughs> no. was, that's why last week i felt so anxious i was like "Ooh, the earth's core must be yeah. off because they're trying yeah to. <laughs> travis is like i feel strange well, has the magnetic pole moved i was like so so when we you know, were, some people are like it's about to rain and travis is like the magnetic yeah, pole of he's the like earth. my bunions are acting up <laughs> Someone's messing with the crust. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy that to think that when they tested, when they were testing the first atomic bomb, like nobody really knew about it except for the people that were doing it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's insane that to think that they were just like, oh, let's just test and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Like, who knows what could have happened? Yeah, that's what like what happened with the Hadron Collider too. They yeah. were like, "Hey, mm-hmm. we're gonna try to like Separate. find out what atoms are made out of." Yeah, and then people were like, "Is this gonna open a black hole?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and they're like, eh, "Well, guess we'll see." <laughs> they're like, "Maybe well, we'll find out." <laughs> But it's crazy that, like, oh, to think, I mean, I understand, like, science, you got to do certain things, and I'm sure that they probably calculated millions of different ways. I think, I still think to this day, the, the most, like, amazing thing is uh, is being able to send somebody to space and, like, trajectory of, like, whatever the moon, I don't know how it fucking works, where, like, around the moon, and then it comes right back kind of thing, and then, I think that's insane. Like, how do you, they send somebody in space, and they successfully come back home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, I don't understand how... How can you calculate that if you've never been out there? Like, they're just a bunch of, like, 
crazy big brains. Yeah. Like I think I think that's just probably the, the most fascinating thing. Yeah. Look how cute Saber is. She is. Saber, what's your fact of the day? Uh, uh my tail hurts. Yeah. <laughs> she just and with that, I'll let you. T- I'll let. Ra- oh, you have your fact of the day. I do. Oh, Rachel, the fact of the day. Uh, there are more twins now than there ever has been before. Wow. In the world, I wonder which why. Which is weird because you think there would be less because it's kind of like a ra- like a rare occurrence. It's because a lot more people. But it's uh, so it says from about 1915 when the statistical records began until 1980, about one in every 50 babies born was a twin, a rate of two percent. Then the rate began to increase. By 1995, it was 2.5. It surpassed three percent in two thousand one and hit three point three percent in twenty ten. That means one out of every thirty babies is born a twin. Wow! Scientists believe this trend is due to the fact that older women tend to have more twins, which is weird. I did not know that as you get older, your chance of having twins is higher. And women are choosing to start families later. Fertility treatments such as in vitro will likely play a role also, which is yeah. true. Like because you're waiting until you're older, it's a all lot of people are having trouble, and then in vitro has it because they put more than one embryo. Then. Yeah, I have siblings who are twins because that, of in vitro because they're test tube babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's interesting because like I wonder if that's going to make like even more twins in the future because tw- being a twin is a uh, like trait yeah, passed if you're a natural on twin. through families. Yeah. I wonder if in like a hundred years humans are just gonna be having litters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, I hope yeah. not. Sixteen twenty. <laughs> and there's just all these babies. Yeah. And they're like, hey, do you want one? Yeah. yeah. They're all yeah. Yeah. This, this one's the runt. And the box. Oh, <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Selling them outside the grocery store like people sell puppies in a box. Yeah. yeah. They just scoop it up. They're like <laughs> No, cute. like bulk barn. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, uh, my turn. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so my fact is um, it's kind of like a series of facts, but this week I've been kind of like obsessively researching beekeeping. Yeah, she told us that last night at like yeah. 10 in the morning. Because and then we just went to bed after you said yeah, that. Yeah, I was we're like, like cool. I was like, do you, guys wanna, do you guys want to know about bees? And you're like, good night. <laughs> yeah. so, so now that you are stuck here with me, I'm going to tell you about bees. Sure. So, um,. So some interesting things about honeybees. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of go over like the life cycle of a queen bee and how she starts. Mm-hmm. Talk about the royal honey. The royal, the royal jelly. The royal I'm jelly. going to, yeah. don't worry. Which is funny because it's on Don't Starve Together and I thought it was a fake thing and then when somebody mentioned that that's a real thing and I was like, whoa. Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'll am i tell you all about that. Okay, okay so basically well, what happens us. is, teach I didn't us. know this. So, so this is, I don't, this might be different for different bee species, but I'm specifically talking about honeybees. Um, so a queen bee... When she's like a virgin queen, she'll get fertilized by a drone bee that's from a different hive. Oh. Not her hive. That's interesting. And then she only mates once in her life. And then she basically like keeps all that. The drone dies when he mates with her. <laughs> He so like, many species that happens. Yeah, his, like, testicles explode and he dies. <laughs> and then that happens. And then she will keep his, like, sperm for her whole life and lay, like, over a thousand eggs. What? So she'll start her hive. So and what they're she kind does, of, like, making sure that they use different, like, DNA. Yeah, yeah. Which so, is good, yeah. Yes, yeah, but what's interesting is, so they only mate once and then she'll lay all of her eggs. But, so, there are basically, like, three classes of bee. There's mm-hmm. the queens, the drones, and the workers. Mm-hmm. And all the workers are female. Mm-hmm. But what I didn't know this is that, so if a queen lays an egg and she fertilizes it, it'll always be a female. Always. And okay. then if she lays an unfertilized egg, it'll always be a drone. Oh. So drones actually only have half as many chromosomes as their sisters. Yeah, because they don't have the... from the They're the unfertilized. Male. Yeah, so it would be like if a chicken laid a blank egg, it would grow into a boy. That's so weird. Yeah, and then so um, queens will lay like thousands of eggs throughout their lives. So um, can she? So she chooses when she, she wants chooses. to make drones and when she yes, wants to make. Yes, that's cool. And people think there's actually some research that go that has gone into it, and they think that the queen will choose um, better eggs for different bees. Like she'll use her shitty eggs to make drones, <laughs> um, and she'll make workers like whatever's needed. And if she's, she's like, making, we'll just make some dumb boys. Yeah, yeah. Do well, she's like, she like she like looks at the egg. egg and it's like a little lopsided, and she'll like this will be a drone. <laughs> <laughs> like no joke like people have been looking into this um but also it's if terrible. she makes another queen um they think that she'll choose like a, a much more superior egg because if she egg. makes a daughter queen it will um it'll like further her genetic line yeah because it'll carry her genes 
But so what they do is, so they lay, um, bees lay their eggs inside the, the cells, like the little honeycombs they make. Yeah. But um, worker bees will make a special one that's called the queen cell. Yeah. That looks a little different. And when the queen crawls over it, she'll know that she needs to put a queen egg in there. Yeah. And then what they do is, um, I didn't know this. So the royal jelly that you're talking about, worker bees produce it. Not queens. Right. So worker bees make this stuff that they call royal jelly. Isn't it basically like they eat it and then they puke it? So what happens is they, all bee babies, like all bee larvae, are given a diet of royal jelly. And then they're switched to honey and pollen. And what's called like bee bread. And bee bread is like a mixture of honey and pollen that bees make. Mm -hmm. And they like pack it into their hives and then they feed it to the babies. That's really cool. But if a, if a bee is... Or if a bee larva is given, like, a strict diet of royal jelly, it'll turn into a queen. And, like, what's interesting is, so basically all bees are genetically identical. Mm-hmm. It's their, um, it's like, it's like they, the, the royal jelly triggers, like, hormones. Mm-hmm. So, like, the way to think about it is it's, like, the bee queen is the only bee who went through puberty. And all the other bees are still in their child form. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And that's why the only one that she made. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I'll, I could go on about this forever, but just, like, the last thing that's really cool is, so, a lot of times, queens will make queen eggs on the go in case the queen accidentally dies. Because, like, if one queen dies, then the whole hive is ruined. So, they have, like, backup queens just in case. But if a backup queen hatches and the old queen's still alive, she'll kill it. Oh, yeah. But if, yeah, because she wants to remain the queen, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, but they always have them just in case, in case the queen dies. And if the queen dies and they don't have one, the worker bees will like scramble to make a queen. They'll like grab a larva out of a normal cell and put it inside a queen and cell. And feed it a whole bunch of like royal Yeah. Cells. And it's yeah. not optimal because those queens are actually weaker. They have like, l- like less fertility than a, like a true queen. But they, they're like, what do we do? What it's do we so do? much more complicated Seriously. than you would ever think. It's okay? so cool. And then, so like what, what I thought was really interesting. So if a queen dies... And they have, like, backup queens ready, and they mature. If more than one queen matures at the same time, they'll, like, fight each other to the death. Oh and God. the one who survives will be the new queen. And that's, like, one of the only times a queen bee will use her stinger. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. But it's anyway. like Game of Thrones with bees. Yeah. yeah. Game yeah. of bees. Like, Game they have, bees. like, they have like an, an incredibly, like, competitive... Complex. Like, yeah, like, um, relationship is super interesting. But anyway, that's, that's very cool. what I've been learning about bees. Yeah. <laughs> and that's bee facts. And, and, that's, and that's bee facts. And now I watch the bee movie, whichever, some people hate. watch the bee movie. I actually oh like the bee movie. Oh my god, I, <laughs> I like the bee movie ironically. Yeah. I've never seen it. I don't plan on it. I think people's, like, the reason, I, the, a lot of the reason why people don't like it is because they're like, why is a bee, like, dating, like, a human? Yeah, because you're watching the movie and you're like, does he want to, like, does he want to like be with her? Be with be her, with and like her. she walks into frame with like a striped shirt on, and he's like, "Wow," <laughs> and he's like, "Hot mama." <laughs> um, my story of the day. Uh, I'll let, I'll do my story of the day last because it's pretty good. Uh, what's up with you? My story of the day is just that I stepped on Saber, and it was sad. It was a very sad. She day. has this tendency to just run under your feet, like with no regard for her own safety. Yeah, and that's she's, why she's, she's just curled like, up like a snake. You know right how now. like little kids are always like on the verge of killing themselves because they're just, like, reckless. Yeah, there's a subreddit called Dad Reflexes yeah, that, that is about kids, like, running and almost falling down the stairs, and the dads are like, no! It's like, Sa- <laughs> like, Saber will just, like, oh, are you about to sit down on the couch with your full weight? Let me run underneath you. All the time. Like, uh, right where you're going to sit. Or, like, t- so today Nick was, like, walking down the stairs to go out to get breakfast, and Saber was behind me as I started walking down the stairs, and suddenly I looked down, and her tail is under my foot, but she's still, like, full momentum going down the stairs. And she went from, like, her barking to, like, she was like, bark, bark. <laughs> <laughs> she made, like, a human noise. And I was like, no! And I thought I'd, like, dislocated her tail. But she she's seems fine. fine. But I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Yeah. yeah. Get away from my feet. You Poor always get kitty. stepped on. That's so funny. I know. I feel bad. She, like, looks for it. It's like. Yeah. She she's sees- like, she wants that, like, worker's comp. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, I'm gonna go on disability for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. She's, like, she's like, just break my leg or something so that I can like sue you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we can cuddle her forever yeah. and ever and ever like we already do. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we're talking about you. She she knows. Yeah. So my story of the day, it's pretty crazy. It's 
pretty funny actually. When so, you preface this with that, I'm like, it's not gonna be crazy. No. <laughs> well, you know that. You know it's it. Pretty, pretty Did crazy. you guys know that it rains? <laughs> yeah, the Earth's yeah. crust is uh, melting. Yeah. Um. So, uh, as you can see, I got my hair cut. Uh. If yeah. you're if watching. you're watching, if you're watching that is if yeah you're if you're watching the video Patreon. yeah if you're not watching imagine it yeah, yeah. <laughs> think of it so before we went uh, I got McDonald's breakfast which I always do and I'm usually fine yesterday and about yes it. and we go to the mall where I'm getting my hair cut and it's like crazy busy and blah 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 and as soon as we get to the mall I'm like oh my stomach is not feeling good <laughs> and I'm like this sucks like I'm like what the heck's going on and Rachel's like are you gonna be fine I'm like yeah I'll be fine so. I go to the thing and I'm already like a few minutes late. So I'm like, sorry, like I'm here now. So I, I, I sit in the seat and as soon as I sit in the barber chair, I'm like, my stomach is just like, <laughs> I'm like, oh no. And this is as soon as he, he gets the razor and he's like, meow, meow. So when my hair is like very long and they do that, they start really, they start like on the number one here. And then like down here, like you still have like a ton of hair, yeah. like right here. Okay. For so those who aren't watching, he's, just imagine. Yeah. yeah just so he's, right here and then right here. So yeah. he's uh <laughs> so he's already cut the very like underneath like the top of my hair and like the bottom of my hair is like still like really long. Like so insane, I look ridiculous. Insane. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm like I have two choices right now. I'm like I could either tell him hold on a minute and like run to the bathroom, which is not next door at all. It is like it is like down the mall. Like it's like in the halfway through the mall point. And I'm like, and look like a complete idiot because I'm probably going to have to keep the apron on that has the, the thing. The barber thing. The barber thing. Travis running through the mall with half the bar- with half a haircut, holding his butt. I know. And I'm like, and everyone's going to be like, what is happening? Like, and they're probably going to think that I'm trying to run out of weight, like, without pain. Yeah. Or <laughs> a security guard tackles yeah, you. I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, or I sit here and endure like the pain and hope that nothing crazy happens, like that he doesn't tickle me halfway through my. Can you imagine if you shit your? He starts tickling me. Can you imagine if you shit your pants in the barber chair? Trust me, I was imagining it, and I was like, what's the worst that could happen? Like, the one day I'm like not wearing khakis, I'm like, I think I would be fine. But anyways, so so I'm like, yeah, he just starts tickling me. He's like, you're so funny, and I'm like, dude. But um, anyway, so he gives I, you like so a really like, tight hug. Yeah, so I'm like, you know what? So I, in my mind, I'm like counting down. I'm like, okay, he's probably like 10 percent away done, 20 percent, 30 percent. Anyways, we get through halfway through, and my stomach just just keeps going crazy. So I'm at the point where I'm at the point where he's. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna ask him like if he has a bathroom here, and I'm like, you know what? Like I'm not gonna say anything. And at that moment, he's like, okay, we're gonna tip you back and we're gonna wash your hair. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And then, like, Rachel was like, you were there, too. I was just sitting there. And I'm like... I mean, I thought he was fine, because he was like, eh, it'll be okay. I had yeah, no idea and he going tips me back, head. and at that moment, I'm just like... And then everything... It was fine, but I was just, like, internally screaming. And as soon as I was done, as soon as I got done my hair, he's like, okay, have a... I'm like, yep, okay, bye. And then I'm like, Rachel, you can pay for me. And then I'm, like, sitting there, and the girl's like, oh, uh, Taking her how time. long... How much is it for a hair... Cu-? I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and, yeah. He paid, and he was like, Rachel, you're going to have to pay. I'm like, okay, And what, I just ran through pin? the mall. And then he's like, never mind, I'll just pay. He paid, and then he just handed me all of his things and, like, literally ran. And I just ran. He ran. Through the mall. Through the mall to the bathroom. Well, I guess it's better running with your haircut yes. than running with a half haircut and a barber's, like, yeah. towel around I you. Know. And moral of the story is he was fine, like... You know, you made it to the bathroom. You did yeah, your business. And everything was good. And everything was fine after. You went and we went to the movie and you got double butter popcorn and you're good. Yeah. But like, so my fact of the day is, don't, I'm gonna, I'm, we're not at all the very end yet, but my fact of the day is make sure that you don't eat McDonald's breakfast before going and yeah. getting your hair cut. Yeah. Or uh, wear a diaper every time you get your hair cut. Yes. yes. Every yeah. time you leave the house. <laughs> every time you leave the house, <laughs> yeah. put on a... Put on your d- Depends. <laughs> I was going to say, what are they called? <laughs> put on your Depends. For all the boomers listening. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> we've been watching... So, I don't know what kind of show... Well, I was going to talk about McMillions. Were okay, we, we going to talk it. about that? Or no? I was not. Are yeah, we going to do all of our stories? What section are yeah, we Yeah, well, Nick... Oh, yeah, sorry. Stories. You didn't do a story of the day. Oh, it, it's okay. That's I mean, fine. <laughs> I thought yeah. your story of the day was the B story. That kind no, of like, that was no, I'm just facts. kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My, my, actually, my second thing to talk about is kind of a... It's kind of factual, but it's also kind of a story. And I think this happened a couple of years ago now, but I was reading about it. So, <laughs> really weird. So, I was reading about um, museums and human remains mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. like, the sort of history and ethics about keeping human remains in museums that maybe belong to different groups of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was reading about, so there's this, it's basically, like, the oldest mummy found in North America. And it's, like, 
It's like 9,400 years old. Is it that little old. girl from the cave? Um, it's a man. And oh, he's called... I mean, I'm sure there's lots of mummies from caves. Yeah, it's like a little baby girl wrapped in like a thing. It's like a Eskimo baby. Not Eskimo. That's probably offensive of me to say. It's like a little like... Um, I don't know what it's called, but they found it like high up in the mountains in like a cave. Mm -hmm. It's a mummy. So I don't know about that. Yeah. But um, this person, this mummy, they they call it the spirit cave man because they found him in this spirit cave, uh, or what was called the spirit cave in um, in Nevada, I think. Hmm. Uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm fairly sure it's Nevada. I'll just say it with confidence, even okay. though it's I might Nevada, be wrong. Yeah. 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 Um, but basically what happened was um, the, the the state was like, oh, this is like, this is like a Stone Age person. Like this, this person isn't related to um, you guys at all. And there's a local tribe that are So called, not a homo sapien? Um, well, not a, what, what, what it was is because the local native tribe, which is called the Paiute Shoshone tribe, mm -hmm. Um, they were like, oh, this this is like one of our ancestors. Like, we want to have like a burial ceremony for this person. And they were like, no, these human remains are, they do not belong, like they're not at all related to you people. Um, this is like from like an older line of people. Like, and the natives were like, are you sure? Like, should we look into this? And they're like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Like, we know, we know we're like, we're the, we're the we're university. Yeah. yeah. And they were like, we think that we should do like a genetic test. And they did it. And it was like over 99% related to them. Huh. And it's like over 9,000 years old. Yeah. And they won and they were like, okay, like, yeah, you have to give this to us. Yeah. And there was this whole legal battle and they ended up giving them the human remains and they held like a whole burial ceremony and stuff. Yeah. But... And then there was like kind of like a bigger question to kind of talk about like what do museums do with human remains? It's kind of weird. Like, yeah. why is it that we want to go and look at like an old, old dead person? Yeah. Well, I was I was trying to read more about it because I was like, this is an interesting topic, and it's something people are talking about now. But this has been a topic that like museum curators have been talking about for like fifty years. Yeah. Hmm. Like within museums. What well, gives us the right to keep this like? human body yeah. in a cave like yeah a yeah. cage but like a glass like, like, for people to see for people to look at well yeah because like there's sort of a conflict right where it's like mummies <laughs> are like sensational and they bring people to the museum mm -hmm. so like if you have a mummy mum, a mummy exhibit people are gonna want to see that Did you know that back in the day they used to take mummies and like like so make i was powder gonna out yes of the, i was gonna then, talk about this. like people in london would like eat it because they yes. kind of, like, gave them powers so stuff. i was actually gonna talk yeah. about this so during the victorian era there was this thing called like um what was it called? I don't, I don't remember what it was called. But it was it was like mummy panic. Like yeah. they were obsessed with mummies. And it was like mummy, like uh, like people were like they found like the first one or whatever. Yeah. So like wealthy Victorian people used to have mummy unwrapping parties like yeah. in the street. They would buy them and then like what the heck? And then and, be like, let's look at it. Yeah, yeah. And they and there was like weird like snake oil medicine where they would like grind up mummies and like put it in your like in your cereal yeah. and it'll cure your rheumatism. Yeah. And like it's like you're just eating like an old old dead body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but so basically, if you there's actually a lot of colors and stuff are still called mummy brown. Yeah. Because of like mummy powder yeah. and stuff like that, I which know. is super interesting. It's so gross. But like there was like I was looking up this the stuff about like human remains ethics in museums, mm -hmm. and there's like all kinds of crazy stuff that I didn't even know. So you know of uh, there is you know the Body Worlds show. Mm -hmm. Um, for those of you who don't know Body Worlds, you might have seen it. it. It's kind of like that show that travels around where they have, like, a human, like, a human body that they preserved, and it's, like, just their whole, like, muscle, muscular... It's, they'll show you, like, it'll be different. Like, people have donated their bodies yeah. to this, like, their, before they die. Like, yes, you may use my body for, like, this, specifically. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, here's the nervous system as an actual, like, human nervous system. And, like, yeah. here's the muscles, and here's, like... There's, like, a one that's about, like, sex, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. And it shows, like, what it looks like, like, inside your body. Yeah, so, like, um, there'll be, like, a, an exhibit that is, like, someone swinging, a ba like, a badminton. But then they'll have, like, the skeleton and then, like, the whole muscle and mm -hmm. then all the skin in, like, different poses. Mm -hmm. Because they've, like, taken this person apart. And you can see, like, all the anatomy. Like, and it's really there. Like, that's it. And it's preserved. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't and know And it looks that... like... This is a gross word to reuse, but it looks like fresh. Like it doesn't look like a dead body. Yeah. It's like that could be someone's live muscles. Like Yeah, yeah. Like it's really yeah. well preserved. Yeah. But what I learned when I was researching this, because I have heard of the Body Worlds show before, um, but a lot of the original bodies used in the Body Worlds show were Chinese political prisoners. 
What? what? Yeah. So, like, people were like, why does that badminton player have a hole in his head? Oh, my God. Because he was executed in a Chinese prison. <laughs> I did not know that. Jeez. Right? It, like, no one would know. And yeah. people were like, okay, well, we need, like, we want to know. Like, people were investigating it. And, like, yeah. investigative journalists were like, we want to figure out where these came from. Yeah. And then they find out that they're all, like, I thought victims. they were donated, like. They are now. Oh. The original bodies were, like, a lot of them were political prisoners. Yeah, that's messed up. Isn't wow. that messed up? Yeah, nobody would know. No. But anyway, that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> um... So we've been watching, or well, we watched the other day. We were gonna either watch a Disney movie or uh, go back and continue watching The Office. And I saw like just crazy a bunch of ads about um, the show McMillions, and it's about the Monopoly uh, game at at uh, McDonald's that was rigged by like this guy. Which I, right now it's only episode one. Episode two comes out on on Monday. It's by it's by HBO. Like mm-hmm. obviously they do great jobs. Uh, with the docu- documentaries, it's kind of like similar. I wouldn't say it's. Uh, what well, I'm trying to I'm trying to compare it to something. It's a documentary. Yeah, but it's so, really, really, really well done. So I'll tell you kind of a little bit of a story. If you guys, if you guys don't want to listen to it, skip this part of the podcast. Don't, don't I, give anything. What? You know what? No, no, I'll no, give no, a little wee, no, no, like a wee little bit. No, 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 no. No, no. You shouldn't spoil it. You shouldn't spoil give it. Us like sum- okay. Give us like a synopsis. Like you know, you read the so, back of a book. So yeah. basically, he doesn't know. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> he's like read goosebumps. The back of a goosebumps book. <laughs> um. So. When it comes to, like, the Monopoly thing, basically, you know, it's been... I don't know how long it's been out for. Since the 90s, probably? This had been happening since, like, 1989 to 2001. Yeah. the length of the scam. And so, every year, they were finding out that uh, there was these, you know, winners of a million dollars. And somebody basically called in and said, hey, uh, you have a link between... They uh, called the FBI. They called the FBI and said, you have a link uh, between a few of the million dollar winners. And they're like, really? And basically they found out that a bunch of the million dollar winners were all tied to the same family. And the FBI was like, at first, like, this is, we don't care about this. We're dealing with a lot of fraud for like health fraud and stuff like that. We don't really care about this. And one of the like new FBI agents was like, no, like this is fun. Like this seems like it could be a cool adventure to like go down and try to like see what we can find. And they realized that the chances of that happening were like one in 30 trillion or something. Mm-hmm. It was like super low it that like two really... people from the same family would win like the million dollar prize. Yeah, like, very like, like it's and they're like this would not happen. So um basically they go through the process of kind of like how are we going to do this? Like are we going to kind of let McDonald's know about this? Are we going to keep this under wraps? Like we have to get more information and they decide that they're going to go and they're going to they're going to inform McDonald's. And McDonald's is like shocked and they're like but at the same time the FBI is like I wonder if McDonald's knows about this and like this is all just a part of their what they're trying to do. Yeah, they're like, "Oh my god." Yeah, they're like, "How did that happen?" happen? So <laughs> funny enough while they're doing the interview, they're like they're reading their body language to find out if they're genuine, like, oh my God, this is a crazy thing. Like you can't, you know, so, and you'll have to watch it to know how it is, but um, they end up, uh, they end up going through with it and they say, look, we want you, because at the time that they're doing the interview with the McDonald's, like the McDonald's like executives, they're like, hey, we want uh, you guys to run another uh, Monopoly game. And because at, the only way we're going to find out what's happening is if we monitor it during the game, right? To see like to see who, who says win, like, who wins, who's talking to who, who's winning. Exactly. Like, so like, like basically, we have to let them scam you one more time. One more time, so and and so Monopoly has to make the decision: do we go ahead with it or do we not? McDonald's, you mean? Uh, yeah, McDonald's, and I will let you guys decide if you want to watch or not. But it's amazing. Episode one is phenomenal. They're like McDonald's. We have to have a meeting with you, and the Monopoly man walks into the office. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I don't know. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, and they're like, you're in jail. And he's like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's really cool. It's yeah. very cool. What's it's it called? It's called McMillions. Yeah. McMill- and what is it? where can I watch it? HBO. HBO. Okay. Another oh. cool show, actually, real quick, I'm not going to talk about it that much, but is, yeah, uh, stop talking. is a Netflix, uh, Netflix pl- like, uh, Earth kind of show, like, basically, like, about... Uh, I think it's called Night on Earth, I'm pretty sure. I don't and think it's called Night on Earth. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what it's called. Night on Earth. It's called, yeah, so it's, not, it's called Night on Earth, which it is, so. No, it's not. No, that's not. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's Night on Earth on Netflix. Okay, but what pulled up first? It's a, it's it's a, a drama com- comedy. No, I, I want to Google it. It's Night on Earth Netflix. Yeah. Are you sure? Because that's from... 
literally last week. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. This is where Rachel apologizes real quick. I'll give you the floor, Rachel. I'm afraid I cannot speak to that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, not the old co uh, drama comedy that you might be thinking of. Yeah. yeah. The new so Netflix show. It's Night on Earth. Uh, it's a basically just like a, you know, your, your David Attenborough kind of style. And they have a new technology where, and when they have a full moon, they're able to basically show you um, as if it's full color. So, because, like, the, the night vision cameras pick up, like, everything is really, really cool with Really, highly suggest watching it. I've been watching it every night. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any shows? Uh, well, yesterday we went for my dad's birthday and we watched 1917 in the movie theaters. Yeah. And it was like crazy, crazy good and like a super interesting cinematography because the whole movie looks like it's filmed in one shot and there's never any breaks and it just feels like you're like there experiencing mm -hmm. it. And it was like, I don't really like going to the movies all that much, but like it was definitely like a cool experience mm -hmm. and the, the movie itself is really excellent i know it's up for best picture i hope it wins yeah it's really good that's it that's all i have to say about it um i've been watching i actually started watching it yesterday there's this new netflix series called lock and key which mm -hmm. is actually based on a, a comic series that i read like years ago mm -hmm. called lock and key that's written by stephen king's son mm -hmm. um and they made a series on it on netflix and it, it's basically like this family moves to this house this like old sort of like manor house that is in their family and they start finding like magical keys around the house that can do different things mm -hmm. and like they're investigating it and like chaos ensues um it's good i like it it's not like a show that you really need to pay that much attention to yeah. like i basically had it on when i was make doing meal prep yeah like it's not like it's not like holding my attention but it's like it's fun and like pulpy yeah that's good but yeah, yeah. Saber, what are you watching? The inside <laughs> of her eyelids while she sleeps. Yeah, me too. What would be your quote of the day, Rachel? My quote of the day is, I, I prepared one because oh I know that God. I never do, and you always, uh, you're always like, you're not prepared. I did not prepare a quote. Uh, everything that irritates us about others can lead to an understanding of ourselves. Is the quote the random quote that was generated to me? Oh, I was like, who's that from? It's from uh, Carl Jung. Mm, usually, I make up my quote of the day, so let's see. <laughs> and my advice of the day. I usually like pick a genuine quote that hopefully helps people like with their life. And Travis is like, uh, you know what they say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's stretching. <gasps> Travis, make up your quote. I'm I can do mine if you want. Go ahead. Okay, so my quote of the day is actually, um, it is a line I highlighted from the book club book that me and the book club book mm -hmm. that me and Rachel are reading in our book club right now. Mm -hmm. And the book is called The Sea of Stars by Aaron Morgenstern. The Starless Sea. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to bet? I'll look it up. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, okay, The Starless Sea, Thank You, by Aaron Morgenstern. And um, basically, just to like give you a little bit of context, I highlighted this and sent it to Rachel because it reminded me of Travis. Yeah. But there's like this magical dumbwaiter that you can like put requests for food in and food will just come up, like yeah. whatever you want. Ooh. So and he like writes it on a note, like, I want muffins for breakfast, and then puts it in, and then like up comes a whole basket cool. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought of Travis instantly, and the, they call it The Kitchen with like a capital K. Yeah. Uh, so the quote is, The Kitchen has taken had taken his request for all the dumplings literally um, um, but the assortment proved as delicious as it as, as it is immediately vast uh, single dumplings in countless varieties all presented on individual covered dishes each accompanied by dipping sauces oh, oh nice dream. and I thought of Travis instantly because when we went to Montreal last year Travis was like obsessed with this really good dumpling place yeah. that we went to and also Travis is like notorious in, for sauces for dipping sauces yeah so, I forget the way we dipped it. Was it like hot sauce? I don't think. It, I think it was like a soy sauce hot sauce, right? If Travis gets a sandwich, in? he'll get sauce on the sandwich, extra sauce on the sandwich, and sauce on the side to dip his sandwich in. Yeah, you can never have enough sauce, and that's my core. That's my core of the day. <laughs> <laughs> sauce on the side. Sauce on the side. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, little sauce on the side. One of that's our my core of the one day. of our hashtags for our wedding that we jokingly came up with was Wes came up with sauce on the side gets a bride. <laughs> sauce because on the side gets Travis a bride. always gets sauce on the side. Um, and my advice of the day is 
once again, spend a little bit of time in the sun and you'll be a little bit more happier, but also do it with your pet. Uh, nice. My advice will be don't steal human remains from third world countries and uh, grind them up for and medicine. Then eat them. And yeah. eat them. Oh, and avoid shark fin soup. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, my advice would be to uh, confide in your friends because mm-hmm. it makes you feel better if you like talk through your life problems with them. And it makes your friends group stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Tell it's me. like Legos, right? Every time you tell a friend a story, you build another Lego piece thing. Yeah. 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 I think there's some truth to that, like being vulnerable mm-hmm. for yeah. your friend, to your friends. You know what was crazy? I never owned Legos as a kid. No? No. Did you? <laughs> I I did not own Legos, but you instantly made me think of a beehive made of Legos that I was looking at oh this week. Oh, my God. <laughs> I seen someone made a whole beehive out of Legos that was functioning. That's yeah. cool. Like bees went into it, and That's... you opened it up, and it was full of like... You can pretty much do anything out of Legos. Yeah, you can make a heart. There's a new TV show coming out that's all about competition of. Like, it's basically it's basically Legos. MasterChef but with Legos. Yeah. yeah, and like also Legos are it's notorious fun. for being like the most horrible thing to step on in the world. They are. We yeah. had Legos, but we didn't really care about them. No. Anyway. But yeah, that's our podcast and a little bit extended than normal. But we had our guest on the show, so we had no choice because you know. Every time we're about to be talking. done, I'm like, "Was it recording?" <laughs> yeah, could you imagine this entire time we're just sitting here, we're like, "Oh no!" And then we have to like rehash it and pretend like we're surprised. Yeah, and then and we're like, Nick's oh, like, no. "I learned about bees," and we're like, "Yeah." You're like, "Yeah, the royal <laughs> jelly, right?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, the thing for me is, like, I would love to repeat myself. Like, I love to talk. Yeah. But to listen to you guys say it over again, I'm like, oh, I know this already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, Nick, thanks for coming on. And yeah, Nick also has thanks. his own podcast. So. Yeah, so I have, uh, basically, it's sort of a, a writing podcast for writing um, sci-fi and fantasy. And it is called Pay No Attention. And you can find it on, like, all podcast platforms, basically, or... Um, we have a Twitter and an Instagram at Paino Podcast and, uh, and Paino Podcast at gmail.com if you want to contact us. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, and uh, so it's definitely fun having you on. If you ever want to come on again, let us well, know. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, you have to that was a tell us right now. Right in the microphone. Yeah. Well, uh, do Sign I get right a bed here. to sleep on next time? <laughs> I sleep over? Yes. Yeah, you get no, with... that couch is comfy. It reminds me of the good old days. Yeah. I just keep, I keep telling Travis, we got to get a king bed so that we can put our bed in the spare room so it can actually be used as a bed, yeah. guest room. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, um, you know, one but if you guys want to watch the VOD, uh, once again, you guys can do so through Patreon. Uh, we haven't decided yet exactly how it's going to work. If we're going to eventually uh, pump out some of the videos on YouTube after a period of time, I'm going to talk to a few more people before doing that. Uh, but if you do want to watch the videos, they're on Patreon uh, on tier two. It's tier one is just the audio. Uh, so for five dollars a month, you guys can watch the video and uh, and the audio and get it exclusive uh, about six or seven days before. Uh, the actual thing gets released on Spotify. But if you want to, if you want to listen for free, you can listen to a bunch of different things on Spotify, Google Music, Apple Music, uh, Apple Podcasts. There's so many different things that it's on now, um, so you guys can feel free to listen to that. And thanks again for tuning in, everybody. And Saber, say goodbye. Ow, my tail. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Happy Sunday.